Regardless if you think bag sizes are good or not, I think that this Mort Dog response to the complaints was really bad. Um, <laughs> all right, so let me just go through this video and address everything he says point by point. Yep. All right, so basically, the, the situation here is he's holding um, Aatrox, Aatrox 3, Ribbon 3. Those are both two costs. And then he's looking for the final Teemo. He rolls 50 gold, and he doesn't hit um, the final Teemo after 50 gold. And then... Blame the bag size. Oh, okay. Someone says something, something, bag size is something. I, I'm not even sure if this guy's legit, legitimately blaming bag size. I think he's, like, making fun of the bag si people complaining about bag sizes. But then Mort Dog it takes this as like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is a bag size thing. The reason he didn't hit here, I don't know if it's a bag size thing or not, but let's just get on to what he says next. You know, let me just check how long it took for him to hit. So how much damage does he take here? I think if he has 22 HP there, I don't think he took 21 damage that one round. I think he literally lost two rounds. So it took him two rounds after rolling 50 to hit. That's like 60 gold. Look, the reality is with the bag sizes being smaller, my odds of hitting are higher. So, okay. Now, here's the thing that I really was curious when I saw him say this. Like, okay, are the odds of him hitting higher based on what we've seen? He doesn't really scout when he says this stuff, but I can only really make the information based on, like, what I've seen. Okay, so right here... This guy is holding 3-2 costs on his board. Oh, wait, that's another one. Okay, that's 4-2 costs. And then Mort Dog himself. Let's just uh, start putting this into the calculator. So he's rolling for Teemo. And all we know is that 8 Teemos are already out. And then number of units of the same cost already out. Let's see. Okay. So this is nine right here. Nine, nine, okay, 18. And then we have to add four. Just did. So that's 22. Sizes on that, yep. really and I believe there's another guy I saw in his lobby. Oh yeah, 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 he's gonna say at this point there's a, ch okay. So that's uh, 22 and now we have 28. Considering these, okay, so 28 of the units of the same cost already out. All right. And also, if you don't know, I actually brought up the this second TFT rolling on calculator. So this first one, it's the most recent, it's the updated for the current set. And this is for the previous set. So basically, if you want to find this, all you have to do is you have to go to the GitHub for like this thing. All right, where do you find? fucking hold up? Oh, yeah. You go to this and then you go and find the old version and then you just download that. It's not too complicated. All right. So basically he had 50. I mean, he rolled 60 gold at that point. Um, But let's just say, okay, so you rolled like 55 that hitting is like, like, this is just an estimate. I, I'm not going to like go exact. Probably doesn't make that big a difference. Um, Okay. So that chance of him hitting one is 94%. The chance of him hitting two is 75%. So he's, I mean, 94% is pretty good for like, for like one, but let's see, like, how about 30? Cause you really would expect like, okay, let's just roll 30 gold for like one Teemo and we'll hit. Oh, also like consider one thing is that people can literally like, they don't even have to buy Teemos. It can just be in the shop. This is something like a commenter pointed out. Uh, and that will actually, take that unit out of your shop. Um, you cannot get the Teemo that's in their shop. Of course, there's mul multiple Teemos, but if they have it in their shop, then um, of course that's going to stop you from hitting. And then uh, in the same way that can work towards you because if they hold, if they have other two costs in their shop, then you will not be able to hit those, that specific two costs that's in their shop. So like, we don't really consider this in the calculations because it could go like either way. But I mean, there, I'm sure there's some sort of significance, but you can't you can't really know that. Um, all right. So uh, if you roll 30 gold for by the way, this is your uncontested here. 
you're uncontested and like looking at more dogs lobby this is kind of assuming that there's no other like two cost rerolls um like this is not like crazy to have like okay only 28 two costs are out if you're the only guy playing two cost because it's really frequent where you're the only guy playing two cost rerolls it's not the same as um like set 10 where we had headliners and there's a bunch of like really good two cost rerolls so you're gonna have like those two cost reroll obviously it's not the same there's people that are gonna be rolling for three costs there's people who are gonna be rolling for four costs and five costs more often than not and then even your own comp like considering that more dog is actually playing like aatrox three and ribbon three i'm not sure if all like two cost reroll comps have even like three two costs um two reroll four so like this isn't like that crazy of a situation but considering this situation if you want to roll for just one two cost on level six which is the maximum odds you don't even have a guaranteed chance to hit it it's only 93 percent to hit one and if you roll 30 gold then you have like a decent chance see 30 gold i would say this is more like where you'd expect to hit um and it's okay 79 for for one 44 for two i mean honestly it's not that crazy but let's let's uh stop getting stuck on that because that's not his point his point is like okay well it's gonna be harder uh two hits in the previous set okay so now we have the previous set and by the way the difference with the previous set is with the bag sizes for two costs is we had 22 so it's actually not that big of a change but you got to think okay well 13 two costs so you got to multiply that and then uh that means 26 more two costs as a whole um what do we get apparently the odds are higher to hit your unit so more dog is wrong I i'm sorry Mort, but uh it seems like you didn't calculate this and it was really obvious when i saw the clip by the way i wasn't like i saw the clip and i instantly knew more dog was wrong because i calculated this because this is actually like I, I i don't even use this like rolling odds calculator um usually so like without using the rolling odds it's super hard to calculate this stuff like it, there's a lot of work so i eventually found this and then like i was actually able to check but the reason why i do more dog was wrong is because i know that more dog does not put that much effort into balancing the game i know more dog puts a lot of effort into making tft a fun game but with balancing more dog is really bad at balancing there are really obvious things that if he actually put the amount of effort that it would take to actually calculate whether his changes are good for the game or not um like the balancing mistakes that he makes would not be there so i i just knew that more dog did not calculate this and he just said out of nowhere like just assumed that the rolling odds were um like actually lower in the previous set i know he just assumed that and then what you'll see is like a lot of comments they'll just go with what he says i i mean it's just absurd like we we, we li literally live in such a stupid society like people will not fact check shit like you could just say whatever you want people will, but i mean that's that's like another tangent i can go on um let's let's stop talking about that because he says some more stupid shit like bag size has become the misnomer for people who have no idea how math works to complain they didn't hit and like it wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for him with this like arrogant attitude like Mortog's always been so fucking arrogant man like somehow tft keeps getting better and better and better but instead of like Mortog becoming more of like a humble person and like because he, he's he knows that he's made a lot of mistakes he just becomes more arrogant maybe it's because like okay he, he knows that like well we improved on this so much uh and therefore i'm becoming better at balancing and i mean i guess that's true to an extent but like the ego does like kind of exceed the ability the capability here I don't, I don't know but let's just uh keep going that's it i didn't hit must be bag sizes why not revert back well it, it didn't have to be back i mean ultimately this is not that significant a bit like that significant of a difference uh when it comes to bag sizes and i mean honestly 
Mortog could be holding units, and maybe that would make a difference. Because, you know, when I roll, uh, ever since they changed the bag sizes in set 10, I always hold units of the same cost. And let's let's just check this real quick. So say you hold, like, how big was his bench? How many units can he hold? He's able to hold three? Three units? This is where you're just outing yourself. Yeah, three units. Okay. The three, two costs. If you hold, if you um, add, if you add three, let's go 31. 31. Okay. It actually makes a little bit of a bit, little bit of a difference. But even considering you holding units, so say you're supposed to full, fill the bench with the same cost, uh, two costs. Your probability is still higher than the previous set. What do you know, man? Like, I'm sorry, board talk, but like, oh my god. What, I mean, whatever, bro. Nomer for people who have no idea how you didn't hit must be bag sizes. Want it reverted? That is the worst argument I've heard. Why not revert bag sizes regardless of people's perception? Lots of people are smart and want it reverted. That is the worst argument. Yeah, that's a pretty bad argument. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, it, it's more like... Like, Mortog knows that's a bad argument. Like, any, anyone can see that if they're going to nitpick. But at the same time, like, that person... All they're, all they're trying to do, really, is to point out that there are a lot of people um, that are not just some random noobs that do think that bag sizes are a problem. And how are you going to address their concerns? To revert ever. Should have rolled earlier when there are a lot more two costs out of the pool. Actually, probably true. Probably true. Out of the pool. Actually, probably true. Probably better to roll when there's more two costs out of the pool. All right. So maybe the rest of the lobby isn't playing reroll. And they're holding some two costs. So let's see. Um... If you're holding units, you're already like 31. And I mean, I guess we could add like, okay, other people are holding two costs, right? We can add like, let's just put this up to 50. I mean, this is like pretty crazy number, but yeah. Uh, let's just put this up to 50. And what do you know? What do you know, Mortdog? I'm sorry, but 0 0.83, 0 0.82. The odds are still worse. The odds are still worse. So basically, unless you're just straight up holding hands with your friends and i'm not i'm not saying like holding hands meaning like you play the same cop i know that's like the terminology but i like uh a different interpretation of these words okay maybe i just made it up okay like unless you guys are just all coming together and deciding to play two cost rerolls it will not be easier to hit it, it literally just won't like and and that means if you guys are all like trying to play uh, two cost reroll. So basically, this incentivizes teamers. Like, so basically, like, okay, you have some people in the lobby that just decide to play the same cost level so they can help each other. Like, that's when it's going to be better. And if they're not actually teaming, then what they're going to do is because they're same, playing the same cost levels, they're going to be holding um, the units that the other guy playing the same cost level is playing, and therefore his odds aren't even better because his units are getting held by them. So, I mean, unless there are literal teamers in your fucking lobby, which by the way, was extremely common in set 10. I mean, it's not literal teaming, but I I mean, like when everyone is just calling their comp and then everyone's deciding like, okay, I'll go this. Now you could go this. How, how fucking stupid is it? This is a solo game. We are literally telling each other what we're playing. We are telling each other what we're fucking playing so we don't contest them. Does that sound like teaming to you? If this type of shit happened in fucking, like, Fortnite competitive, if anyone knows Fortnite, but I, or, like, Apex, any, like, Battle Royale where we actually have solo games, because these days everything's a, everything's a team game. Um, Like, any Battle Royale game where it's, like, solos, and you are literally coordinating with other teams where to fucking land. I, this is just absurd, bro. I, I mean, so literally, unless you team... It's it's not it's not easier to hit. Okay, but whatever. Probably true. Like the thing about greeting with fifty gold was probably that's actually probably correct. That's probably correct. We're like, dude, where are you getting this from, man? How about you just go to the calculator, man? Oh my god! Like this guy's a developer, bro. He's a fucking developer. I I whatever. If uncontested lower bag sizes are good for you, but what about those people who come home from work, want to play a cool comp they saw on YouTube, and cannot play those because the units are contested? Yes. See, Zelic, that is the argument, but that has nothing to do with bag sizes, right? Like. That, I, I've told this before. If TFT is going to be a drafts game, which again means contested units and things like that, 
the bag sizes are correct. But you're right, there is a large group of players that don't want that, right? There is a large group of players that just <clears throat> want to log in and play the comp they want to play. You're right. And like I said, that is one of the quintessential things we're debating right now because the sizes of those audience are actually pretty equal. There's a, a group that really wants this, like, are actually pretty equal. Yeah, the, the sizes of those audiences are pretty equal. Really, dude? Where is he getting this from? There's a, a group that really wants this, like, high skill depth thing and there's a group that wants to just like log in and play what they want and relax and have fun. okay i i forgot to add this part because i already watched the video and i saw like the then he mentioned the high skill thing that's what he's talking about the two groups of people like oh there's the the groups that want lower bag sizes because lower bag sizes are higher skill guys totally higher skill this is the other thing that i completely disagree with lower bag sizes are not higher skill at all Nope, they're not higher skill. In fact, they could be less skill because when you decide your comp, all you're doing with the current bag sizes is you're looking at, okay, what is this guy playing? Okay, let's just not play what this guy's playing. Like, look at his items. Okay, he's doing this comp. All right. You know, this guy's doing this comp. All right, okay. So I'll, I'll just play this one comp that's not contested. That's like, and, and then like, let, let's just get like, let's start going uh for bis items for this comp that's how it works and, and like everyone decides this shit usually early on in the game and then what what happens when we have higher back size where you can actually play the same comp as somebody else if you already have a lot of units for that comp instead what we're doing is we're flex we're, we're actually more flexible in fact we see a lot of this these units in our shop even though someone else is also maybe playing that comp you play off of what you already have now you see a bunch of this guy in your comp, like maybe you see a bunch of bards. Summer also is maybe playing bard. Maybe bard's a bad example. Maybe three costs you could never contest. Um, but oh yeah, two costs probably a better example or one cost. Okay. Uh, whatever. Insert two costs. Insert one cost here. Uh, in into this story that I'm making up. All right. So you you see like a bunch of these two costs in your shop, or like you just happen to natural a bunch early on. Like maybe you have six. Of this two cost unit all you need is three more but then someone else is playing the same thing maybe they also have six i mean this sometimes happens and especially with one cost i mean i i remember back in uh set nine a lot of people they both they both start with like six maybe six shows and then you have two show rerolls rerollers in your lobby um so what you have then is people actually being flexible they're getting th the natural things and then they play off what the game gives them what we have instead is that you can literally hit like six of that unit, but just because you're contested, you can't even finish rolling for that unit to get a three star and you have to play something else. Where's the flexibility? All you're doing is you're seeing what else other people are playing, or you're even asking them what they're playing, or you're just telling each other what you're playing, and then you're deciding to play something else. This is so stupid. This is a single player game. Like we're just making TFT a team game at this point. And, and not just that, like there's no flexible, like how is this competitive? How? And then, like, it gets worse. It literally gets worse. And they're both valid. They're both legitimately valid. But they have trade-offs, right? Life is all about trade-offs. There is no correct answer here. So. But I actually agree with you that, like, that's a thing. And, I mean, if you want to see what, like, higher bag sizes was like, you could play the old 3.5, right? And what was 3.5 like? Well, everyone could force the exact comp they want. And you'd have five blade masters in the same game yeah this is a horrible argument he's like okay we have five blade masters in the same game do they have their units start up can you with the old bag sizes have five people playing the same cob and have all their units start up no what you need to realize is they're at a supreme disadvantage if they're all playing the same cob like they're not gonna have units start up so ultimately in a competitive setting there is actually more skill because when you have like a lot of units in the pool and you can play different comps, you have to consider like, okay, is it worth playing this comp when my units are not going to be start up instead of just being like, okay, well, this guy's playing this. I can't play it. Like then you actually have to consider these things. Like, yeah, these people in, in like an actual competitive setting, they could have five blade masters but how many of them are actually going to top four the game? 
I think maybe two or even one or maybe none. I mean, it's completely possible that none of them actually hit decently enough where they're actually strong. And they all just like, I mean, okay, one has to bop, one has to top four because obviously there's five. But you get what I'm saying. Like it would be like fifth and then sixth, seventh, eighth. I, I mean, that type of shit. Okay. You know? The answer is simple. Have two different game types. Nope. Splitting up your audience is really, really bad. Thankfully, TFT has a big enough audience we could get away with it. And okay, I agree with him saying, like, let's not split the game. There you go. Sure. Because if you're actually a competent developer, you shouldn't have to split the game. Like, not only is it bad for the game, like, it's really easy to just be... Well, okay. I wouldn't know if it's easy. I'm not a developer myself, but I... I think that it's probably not that hard to instead just balance your game so you don't have to create two versions of the game because you did not know how to balance a certain issue in your game. I, I think that makes more your sense. Audience is probably not what you want to do either. What if the real bag size is all the people, only nine copies of each champion, and only five costs are shared, the rest are personal bags? Uh, again, trade-offs. Um, that will make every... Like, let's say, let's say we do that, right? And there's a three cost comp that is insanely all right by the way this suggestion from that guy is just and uh i i don't agree with this i <laughs> but um three cost more dog like he always does has the worst hot takes like it's really easy to say why this is bad but let him explain why it's bad comp that is insanely powerful you will have lobbies where all eight people are playing the same three cost you will have lobbies where all pe all People are playing the same three costs. Really? That's the problem you get from that? I think the obvious problem is like, dude, there's going to be infinite three-star four costs. Like, everyone's just going to go for a three-star four. Like, who's going to play a fucking three costs? Who? Like, just go for a three-star four cost and you win the game. Go for a three-star five cost, you win the game. Who's holding? Okay, well, they did say five cost shared pool. But okay, four costs. Four costs, no, share, uh, no shared pool. Okay, just three-star four costs, insta win. GG. Is that good? Probably not. But yeah, that's what I mean. Is like bag sizes is the kind of thing that has very, very deep design trade-offs. And like I said, imagine if everyone had their own personal bags, and let's say Yone is broken, there will be eight Yone players in every lobby. Yeah, yeah like here's here's where he gets the worst explanation. Gives the worst explanation ever. Like let me just expand on how bad Mort Dog's explanation is. Like okay, sure, maybe uh, it's not very cool if all the players. Are playing the same comp i think this is only bad for like competitive views like oh competitive is boring there's no variety but for casuals i mean ultimately they're gonna be so happy with this change because they just play whatever they want like I, I don't think casuals care that like the someone else is playing their comp unless they're getting contested i mean that really is the problem you know is that a good thing no definitely is that a, eight yone players in every lobby yeah so you have eight yone players in every lobby because yone is broken do, do you not see yourself calling you out there? Calling yourself out there, Mortdog? Because Yone is broken, it is a meta to play Yone. So he is saying that in this uh, situation that he made up, uh, but I mean, you don't even have to make this shit up <laughs> because it actually happens. It is ideal to play Yone. If you don't play Yone, you're at a disadvantage. So what's the solution? Have it. So not everyone can play Yone. So what does that mean? What are the consequences of these of this action? The consequence is that everyone is at a disadvantage besides the guy playing Yone. How is that better? This is the worst explanation ever. How is that good in a competitive way? It's fucking not, bro. It's it's not, man. Like the thing is, if a comp like I and like this hypothetical scenario that this chatter made up is honestly pretty bad so let's just talk about this from like an old set perspective where we just had like um increased unit bag size like larger unit bag sizes in other sets instead of like eight people being able to play in the same comp maybe it's like two or three people and they can all like hit decently if they just happen to natural those units at least if that comp is like broken and unbalanced at least they can all be like all have the same advantage and there are going to be people who do not high roll like the units of that super meta comp and they could probably still go for it if there's just one guy contesting and i honestly think that that encourages competitiveness and good decision making because they can decide okay this guy's contesting 
how much can we hit? This comp is really broken. Maybe even though I'm contested, this comp is still going to do more than the other people in my lobby. Okay, but what's worse? What's way worse is only one person able to play that comp because they happen to natural the units for that comp. And then no one else is able to hit that same comp. And that comp happens to be way better than everything else. That person on 2-1 has an advantage over the whole entire lobby. Maybe they just insta top four for 2-1 and we can actually see these things happen. Let me give you an example in set 11. There are probably examples in set 10, but let's just talk about the current set. I don't want to think too much. Uh, right now, we have what's pretty meta is Kog'Maw and Caitlyn. So Kog'Maw, Kate reroll, pretty good. If someone naturals a bunch of Kog'Maws on 2-1, they have good items and, and like Kate's, they can just play Kog'Maw, Kate reroll, free top four. So on 2-1, they get a top four. Where's the skill in that? They just 2-1'd Kog'Maw, Kate reroll. Are you able to contest it? Are you able to like, I mean, you could maybe hold them, their units if you're in the specific situation where it's not going to grief your econ to hold your, their units and you somehow see it in their shop, which is a very narrow situation. So you're probably not going to be able to stop them because they just natural those units already. But at the same time, you can't play the same comp because of the pool sizes. And then they basically got a free top four while you actually have to think about the game and decide how to get a top four. And you know what? What's at least nice about the situation is that Kog'Maw Kate reroll is not like going to guarantee give you a win. But then let's actually, actually, now I can bring up set 10 because there is something. The heart steel balancing was so fucking atrocious last set in set 10. Literally 2-1, if someone just gets heart steel, they win. If they're a competent player. Like 2-1 heart steel, they win. And then, I mean, honestly, with headliners, we kind of like fix the issue of um, like people hitting on 2-1. It was more of like, okay, someone 4-2'd it and now they win because of headliners. So like, you can't just 2-1 it into an Ezreal Headliner. I, that doesn't make sense. Obviously, 2 one still big advantage because hard steal early. But if someone just 4 twos it into an comp, now, okay, there's their insta win. Because they have, I mean, they have hard steal in late game and hard steal just gives infinite loot and is way stronger than everything else. They can push nine into five costs and just out cap everyone else. So there you go. Free win, where's the skill? There's no skill. It's just they got lucky and they just hit the top comp of the game and they can't be contested um or they can be but at least that other person's not gonna have like as good of a board as they have because they already hit those units because of the pool sizes so that aside all the serious talk aside like statistics and actually like i don't know logic and stuff let me give you a little conspiracy theory remember when conspiracy theories were all about like uh, some random funny shit like aliens or uh, okay, I don't know that many conspiracy theories, to be honest. But, like, before they were, like, politicized, I guess. I'm gonna give you a non-political conspiracy theory that I came up with. And maybe, just maybe, Mortog is doing this because he doesn't want to see Milk in the game anymore. If you don't know Milk TFT, he's been basically the GOAT of TFT for most of TFT's history. Like, He's just the best. Well, not, I, I, I don't know, GOAT of TFT, but at least GOAT of NA TFT. That's all I really know about is NA TFT. And if you don't know Milk, Milk has always been the player that uh, likes to force these broken comps. Every time Milk is doing well in a set, it's, it's all, it's, it exposes the devs, basically. Because, like, usually if he's doing super good in the set, he's rank one, he has, like, infinite LP, he's just spamming the same comp, and it just shows, like, the devs don't know how to balance the game. And Mortog probably thinks that doesn't look very good for him. And then not just that, Milk also talks about like how the game is not balanced and how the game is all luck. Let me just give you this interview real quick. Yeah, so basically the Sivir, which is super unbalanced at the time and gives most gadgets. If you don't remember, Sivir is really good at a certain point in the set. Um, and the devs just didn't know how to balance shit. This looks pretty bad for Mortog compared to like, okay, we have just like your average, um, I don't know, I guess competitive video game player who's like, oh, dude, I played really well this game. I, I had this genius play or something. Uh, like, let me just give you an example of C's of, of like normie competitive players. Like you have, like say like Fortnite, you have Booga. He wants a big tournament. This guy will not really ever complain about like balancing in Fortnite and then just compare him to like a dude like Mongrel, which is going to be Mongrel is like notorious for certain clips 
Like, when swords were in the game, they are super unbalanced. That's so... Why the fuck is there a sword in this game? Oh my god. That's so annoying. Are you fucking serious? Why the fuck is Thanos in the game? Sing, 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 sing! Sing, sing, sing! Why is that in the game? Sing, sing! At that time, Mongrel was like complaining about that, and then there were airplanes in the game, and there was like teaming in Fortnite. This is Fortnite, guys. This is Fortnite. This is Fortnite in the current meta. We are doing Morse code in planes in the air. We are giving each other Morse code to be friendly in a solo battle royale match. Someone explain how this is possible. And basically he was complaining about like people just like teaming in the uh airplanes he has a clip and here's like the best example of like what the type of guy that i think like is so good for devs good for their like pr he's not going to make them look bad in any way and that would be like yay so basically yay if you don't know him he was uh pretty good in valorant back in the day i don't know how good he is right now i don't really keep up with valorant and to be honest i don't really keep up with any game besides tft really these days uh but anyways Basically, for a period of time, Chamber and Agent in Valorant was extremely broken. It was better than anything else. Like, his ability allowed you to just one-tap dudes by body-shotting them. And it was, like, almost rapid fire. And, like, the hip-fire accuracy was super good. And if you scope in, you have full accuracy because it's a sniper weapon. And then... Oh, oh no! no. Absolute catastrophe as Ye finds perfect timing with the quarter oh, force and annihilates the entire team, secures the ace, and... I mean, his, like, default, like, just one of his basic abilities was super broken, like, you had almost full accuracy and you could one-tap people if he shot in their head. Yay! Hajimatta kabuki wa kiken da! Yay! Yay! Um, and it was, like, super cheap. And basically, Ye would just abuse this every game, and he never said one thing about Chamber being broken the whole time. And basically, Riot did actually end up nerfing Chamber, and he just quietly switched to Jet, and he even never said anything about, like, okay, Chamber's actually really bad for Valorant, and, uh, like, the only reason I'm winning matches is because I'm playing Chamber, which is kind of the only reason he was winning matches. No offense, Ye is really good, but, like, the reason he was so good at the, at the time is because of Chamber, and I think everyone can agree with that but milk is not that guy milk is always going to complain um like milk is always going to be a hundred percent real with like why he's winning or why he's losing and usually it's something to do with balancing because milk just finds out what the best thing in the game is like most pros and if he's able to play the best thing in the game that the devs have no idea how to balance of course he's going to win and he admits that but a lot of pros will not say shit and now we haven't even have this clip with like Mort Dog wants milk to lose. Okay, but anyways, if you want to know why Mort Dog doesn't like milk, dig a little for yourself. Look at this. First set that Mort didn't block me on Twitter. Uh, context is basically last set. Milk didn't play last set because he didn't like headliners. And Mort Dog didn't block him on Twitter because Mort Dog just hates Milk's opinion so much, calling out his bullshit, calling out the, the balancing bullshit, that like, th as long as Milk doesn't say anything, he's fine with Milk. That 9.5 balancing was awful. And Milk, like, you will never see another, like, big TFT content creator or, like, TFT pro doing this. Like, he is literally straight up posting on his YouTube channel that the balancing is horrible. Bard, just uh, play Bard because Bard's broken. Uh, Rito Summer Break. Like, dude, this guy, he definitely has a filter. I mean, I feel like some things he, he might not say, but definitely less of a filter than other TFT pros have by a mile and talking about all that about like okay well Mork Dog wants milk gone who's gonna replace milk the goat of TFT obviously the new goat of TFT which is dish soap and obviously Mork Dog's gonna be so much happier with dish soap dish soap if you don't know he posted this thing which is absolutely awful to look at he was ranking traits ah uh, yes holy shit how how can you not look at this and just want to die i i don't know he put heart seal at s heart seal the worst bounce trait econ trait like in the game 
the one econ trait where there's literally no risk for infinite reward the econ trait where you can just put it in and get infinite money instead of like actually having to lose rounds to uh get your cash outs and shit he has penta the comp where there's three carries that have backline access and can just kill your backline for free with no counterplay we have true damage true damage where i mean do i even need to explain it's fucking true damage that's the trait like what this is a great trade idea are you fucking kidding me are you fucking kidding me like okay sure it can be in the game but seriously s tier it's true damage man okay whatever man jazz we have jazz where just like with hard steel if you just have jazz in you win the fucking game if you're on like level eight or level nine like literally just everyone's spamming jazz every game we have four people in the lobby playing jazz we have three people in the lobby playing jazz early set like first patch of uh set 10 like literally everyone was playing jazz if they wanted to be rank one like you could just check accounts uh like Satsuko was rank one in every single game he just forced jazz wow great trades guys great great trade so much fun dish soap replacing milk as like the goat of tft is the best thing that could happen for more and he might have succeeded milk for a second set in a row is not playing like he said he would return after after set 10 but like I mean he hasn't really come out I mean he's he's come back to check out the set but he hasn't stayed and I think it might be because of bag sizes I don't know it's a little conspiracy theory he's not ranking these based off of power it's based off of how fun it was to play with and against oh my god dude so already did talk about how jazz first pet oh my god I mean this is I guess more talks just I have to get exposed again isn't he all right so if you don't know more dog like there was I talked about how bad Jazz was, like, first patch of set 10. And there's actually a reason. It wasn't just like, okay, the devs didn't know what they're doing. Um, and TFT devs slip up all the time, so Jazz happened to be unbalanced. No, no, no. There is literally a reason why you're able to force a comp with the reduced pool sizes every single game and win every single game. That was Setsuko rank 1. That's literally how he hit rank 1. It's set 10. I was going to make a video on this originally, but then like I actually had stuff to do and I took a break from TFT and maybe I took a break from TFT because the game was just not fun when you literally have to play one comp if you want to win the game. Mortog made a bet before going into um, that pen. And let me just find this again, TFT Clips, the ultimate Mortog truth exposure. Number one source for self-incriminating Mortdog statements. If we have a B patch related to balance in set 10, I will give away $500 during Christmas break. And basically, as long as you don't do a B patch in the first patch of set 10, you basically make it a New Year's, which is what happened. But did it happen because the game was balanced? No. What happened is Mortog didn't want to fail the bet. He made a bet for $500 and he's like, no, it was so easy to be patch jazz. It was so obvious what was wrong with the first patch of set 10. And I literally just, maybe it's not, but it's so likely that this is the reason. Because Mortog cannot put aside his, his goddamn ego. He has to just sacrifice a whole patch. It was like multiple weeks of the game being in, in an absolutely competitive, horrible state. And then all of a sudden, like, okay, you know what? New Year's is here. We have a tournament coming up. Now we can finally bounce Jazz. Oh, my God. Like, this is why you can't trust Mortog to be, like, an unbiased dev. He has his personal re reasons for things. He has his ego. And, like, here's another thing. Like, Ezreal, I mean, I probably complained about Heart Steel a decent amount on this channel. But if there's anything that does give me some confirmation on my thoughts of how unbalanced heart steel was and how actually unbalanced ezra was because this is the thing part of heart steel being unbalanced is not just the heart steel loop. it's also the fact that ezreal is actually broken i know i know all these people are saying oh it's just heart steel is broken no 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 ezreal is fucking disgusting so if you didn't know what happened end of set end of set 10 uh basically ezreal had a mana nerf it was 40 to 45 mana this is actually a huge change because you use blue buff. And basically, if you have blue buff, it's three autos per cast in order to ult. And, and that was like the uh, BIS as real as blue buff, i.e. red buff. 
So by increasing the mana from 40 to 45, it's uh, one extra auto per cast. So he wants the really big ult, which is every third cast. Instead of being nine autos to get the big cast with a blue buff, it would be 12 autos. Now, if you build Shojin, then it would actually be the same interval as blue buff. But what did I see at the end of the set? What I saw is everyone was still going blue buff, i.e. red buff. And not just that, they're going blue buff, i.e. red buff in more than ever before. I mean, like more people are playing Ezreal than ever before. Like before, you know, usually it's three to four hard steel dudes a lobby. I was seeing like five to six um, AD flex players every single lobby. And when people played Ezreal, they would still use Wuba. So the mana changes seem to have not affected anything. Like, and, and here's the thing. Like they would play this blue buff Ezreal build and still one tap your backline. See, that's what annoys me so much about Ezreal design. Like he can, like, not only does he do insane not only does his ability hit so many units, he also just one taps your back. Like, how is that fun? Like, how is that good design? Like, there's so many four costs already in set 10 that one tap backline, you just have to have another one. And it happens to be on, like, the best thing, best trade in the game. Like, and it's like, here's the thing. If you don't think Ezreal is good, just compare him to, like, say, I, I think set eight's like a, like a really good thing you can draw from because we had Vayne. So basically, Vayne is, I don't know, the most similar unit I've seen to Ezreal in TFT since my time of playing. Um, it had a recon trait in order to activate the dash, but that's only if you had recon trait in. If you didn't have recon trait active, Vayne doesn't dash. When Vayne ulted, I, I think it was similar mana. It might have been the same exact mana. When Vayne ulted, she would just shoot one bolt that did like true damage with like really low AD scaling. So it would do like, if you had like a three star Vayne with good items, instead of doing like over 1000 damage like Ezreal does, it would do like 600 or something. Cause I mean, it is true damage at the end of the day. But here's the thing, like even though Ezreal is a four cost, like yes, it's more expensive than Vayne, but then also you gotta consider, like you gotta consider Vayne three versus Ezreal two. And usually three star three costs are stronger than two star four costs, just cause of like how much gold they cost and how hard it is to hit. It's a lot harder to hit. A vein three if vein three was in the set in in set 10 while ezreal was there ezreal would be like 10 times better than it, it doesn't even make sense ezreal has the same ability as vein except just does more damage like yeah it's not true damage but the 80 scaling is so high that it just it does way more damage and then he also has like this massive ult on the third cast which is better th than vein's ult by like 10 times because it's gonna hit way more units and just aoe damage and on top of that, you don't even need to activate some sort of recon trait. He has literally built-in fucking dashes. Like, I, like the most annoying thing, and this is why, and if you want to know why melee carries never took off in set 10, and they were never consistently good, it's actually because Ezreal was in every single lobby. If Ezreal was not in every single lobby, like, melee carries would actually be able to be consistent and actually do something. Like, the whole thing stopping melee carries from being viable ever was just Ezreal. How can they play against Ezreal? He has single target damage, he has AoE damage. Where's the counterplay? He has dashes. Single target, dashes. What do you do? You do nothing. You just lose. And that's it. Like, it was the most... The, like, seeing the end of set and seeing everyone just playing Ezreal and winning every lobby was Ezreal was the most validating thing I've ever seen. Because if you go onto, like, the competitive TFT subreddit, or you just go in YouTube comments... And even, I don't know, like Mortog just gloating about how balanced the, the game is. And then you just see Ezreal. And then like Riot actually acknowledged that Ezreal was like actually too strong. There is no way you can't say that if last patch they actually nerfed Ez. And then it continued to be broken. That's how broken it was. That's really how broken it was. And, and like, here's the thing though. Like here, here really like we're, we're going to, I'm going to tie this back into Mortog because I can't just leave on some sort of tangent because this really isn't as random as you think it is, this ties back into like the ego thing that I'm talking about. It's like when he thinks the game is balanced, he really like digs into that idea and he almost gets stuck on that. Like sometimes the game really is balanced, but then things can change and the game state can change. And then like people start spamming the same shit and you got to realize that. Like, and also like, dude, don't play the stats on this uh, because like, yes, Ezreal wasn't doing well according to the stats. And that's just because so many people are spamming him that like they couldn't all hit. So of course someone has to bot four. But ultimately, Ezreal players were winning every lobby. And like if it if it wasn't Ezreal 
unit winning the lobby. It's just a guy who pivoted off his Ezreal after getting the hard steel cash out. But like end of set, like I guess like the whole like last month or two, like just the balancing changes could have been there. It was so easy to balance Ezreal, like just to revert. I honestly think just revert the buffs they gave him initially. Like maybe do that or like do something about hard steel. I feel like it's not hard to do something about that. Like it really isn't. And they just, there was just no attempt to do something about that. Because like the devs just thought the game was like so balanced at that point when it really wasn't. And and maybe it's because of Mort, maybe not. I would actually like to think that Mort Dog is just a representative of the the Riot balancing team. And he doesn't actually have as much power as most people think he does. But I mean, it's the evidence does not suggest that. It seems like when there is something that Mortog talks about personally, that does actually affect the balancing. And that's kind of worrying. But at the same, the same time, I'd say just don't be worried because the game has been getting better and a lot better. And yes, TFT, every set is the best it's ever been. I, I just think it's absurd that someone can just say things that are completely false and have no basis. And then you have other people completely believing them without actually checking like what they're saying. He is guilty of tricking noobs, low APM, and worst of all, being North American.